It's time for another inspiration video. Today we're going to talk about habitat backdrops and I think it is really good to talk about these things because your habitats need good backdrops in order to hide away the backstage area. And there are a couple of things you can do and today we're going to discuss some of the tips I have for you. So let's get things started. Number one is the good old rock facade, as you can see over here. Now, the important bit about the rock facade is the four rocks that have been introduced with the aquatic pack over a year ago are really good for this. Because in modern zoos, uh, you quite often do see these things um, as a common thing to hide away your backstage. As you can see in this example, I have my entire um, lion backstage area with all the cages and stuff hidden in here. You even see some air conditionings if you look close but overall this is a very good way of hiding the things you even have like the water um, waterfall coming down and this is also a clever way to hide away things like for example the water purification system and stuff like that um, and the reason behind using the four rocks pieces for that as a as a little idea is in modern zoos they tend to use not the real rocks because they are a way too heavy and um, also b way too expensive and c they also have kind of problems sometimes with cleaning stuff and uh, having moss and stuff growing about this um, so that's why they mostly use four rocks it's kind of a, a very interesting um, material that they use there it's kind of fiber things and stuff um, so very important uh, to consider using four rocks i always feel like they are also the most versatile in the game anyways because they are flexi color and you can adjust them and i also do put some of these aquatic um, kind of root kind of rocks in there um, so I think it's a good way to use these things as a backdrop but now let's move over to the next one the next one is actually kind of simple it's incorporating your backstage building directly so in this example over here for my realistic otter habitat you can see that I used the building for the otters the backstage building as kind of a backdrop itself by putting down a lot of different um, kind of uh, wooden patterns to it and, and wooden planks and stuff and really made it part of the habitat by using natural materials that would be fitting with the original habitat they are coming from which is Asia and this uh, case and I try to mimic a little bit of the Asian style in here but if we do take a closer look to this building you will notice that on other edges I'm actually in with a pretty normal kind of style you know big windows and stuff and the back backdrop is actually pretty much backstage um, and as you can see this is the way how it works so from the front you have a pretty much a habitat aligned look um, we do have some windows and stuff to uh, you know make up for the stinky smell that that these animals come with um, it's it's like a little bonus of the otters you know um, keeping it uh, well you know um, well established with some airflow and stuff it's very important indeed but this is also a cool way of using backdrops um, sometimes by using just your backstage building for them um, as the actual backdrop by choosing specific materials okay let's move on to the next one next up is actually a billboard. As you can see for my red panda habitat over here, you can see that I used the billboard to make the inner part of the habitat, like the indoor section, a little bit more interesting looking by adjusting it to their natural habitat. So I chose to go for a picture from some mountain-ish areas and I incorporated that in here as like a little picture in the background, uh, making sure I used some rocks and stuff to somehow blend this nicely in. And um, also I used some of the foliage pieces that that could well cope with what you see in the background. And I feel like this is a cool way of, of making things happen. We do have in the game some murals already that work pretty well with it. But um, in this specific case, I just used a simple image that I found myself on the internet and use it in here. So I really recommend to play with it a bit more. Um, try to use ones that go really well uh, in line with your habitat. And then these things can be very powerful if you also incorporate some little items in it to add some depth to it. But um, make sure that you choose some that also, you know, fit in with the color pattern of your habitat. But then they are really pow uh, powerful to, to give you some more um, um, just variety in your habitat but also to add more detail by not putting down too many different things so let's move on to the next one 
Another favorite of mine is actually fake facades. As you can see over here, this is an African penguin habitat. You can see to the right hand side, there is a couple more areas that they can use. And on the left hand side here, I put down some fake facades that almost look like a little bit like, I don't know, maybe Morocco or South African style, you know, um, just making sure it's somewhat resembled as if there were some buildings. But in fact, these are just some walls and some roofs and put some awnings on, on top just to give the feeling as if there were buildings in the back but in fact they don't really have another um, you know big uh, usage to themselves and I can actually show you I even went a little bit further ahead this time around and I even made them look like fake facades themselves so you can see I just put some support beams in some backstage stuff for, you know clutter in here and we do have like a backstage building in here but everything is like super simple um, you know not really not really intricate not many details not many pieces which is super important as well for Planet Zoo as you know um, and just you know work myself in with this little trick so fake facades is a great way to separate your habitat from the rest of your zoo by not you know making um, it all look too ugly or too shabby or granting too many views actually towards the backstage because especially for franchise that's relatively important to make sure that people are happy and not disturbed by your facilities. Alright, another one in this list is centerpieces. Well that might sound weird at the first glance but there is you know always a moment where you don't have a specific backdrop to your habitat. What about habitats that are central to an area, that have a complete 360 possible road around them? You still want to make sure that the views of the people are somewhat directed in a uh, in a direction that you make sure people look away from backstage or areas that are a little bit more ugly and stuff. So in this case over here for my meerkat habitat, I place this little um, African uh, kind of tower thingy in the middle, which is not more, not much more than just a little bit um, as a kind of a nice style to that little bridge. But the bridge itself um, is a little clever way of hiding certain things. So first of all, you go through here, and in that moment, you do block the left-hand side, which is the view to the back backstage of this habitat. So um, I actually utilize this building to make sure that people don't use the bridge to look there, but you're forced, rather than uh, looking to the backstage, you're forced to look down into the habitat. And you can see, look at all the meerkats down there, enjoying their time, having a good time over here. Um, and there's another usage for that one. You can use these buildings as well as little shelters for them. As you can see here below that bridge, you can always put some little things like, you know, food items or whatnot. Um, so that way you can always make sure that your habitats are well established in terms of making sure that the backdrops of your habitats are not viewed too often and so you have a, a visual way of making people look into these areas you want them actually to look I mean realistically the people in Planet Zoo don't do that but I think you know it's rather important to keep it realistic if you want to have certain styles to make sure people don't look into your backstage area so that's about that one let's move on to the next one Next up is buildings. Yeah, if that might sound a little bit weird at the first moment, it is very important that you guys use your buildings and your centerpieces to your advantage. Now, in this case, I made an aquatic dome a while ago, and this dome itself, the architecture and the, the dome facade, is a perfect way to get to grant a nice background to your outdoor habitats. As you can see over here, how happy our keeper is to be working in that beautiful habitat. You can see I have this huge open uh, king penguin habitat to the outside. They even have a way to go in if they want to. And I utilized the whole dome as the backdrop of this specific habitat. I even made sure that we have like a little bit of a uh, an art peat. I even want uh, art piece. I even want to uh, call that it's the art peat. I think that's that's the guy who made this. But this is an art piece. Um, and we utilize the dome as a nice little backdrop uh, to the habitat so this is a very good way as well use your buildings if you like your buildings and have a good style well use them because that's a good way of actually using the the things you have in your zoo to give your habitat a bit more of a nice backdrop of a nice view itself and uh, yeah that's just one more idea another very simple trick is colors yeah it might sound strange but Using colors is already a huge thing to the, the, the 
the viewer's eye, so to say. You can play a lot with colors in order to make habitats nice and give them a completely different feel. As you can see over here, the inside of my aquatic dome, we've got two different color styles. We've got a very deep blue for the king penguin to really give away a bit more of where they live and, you know, co a little bit more with the, the Arctic area and stuff. And then we have a bit more of a light blue to give the harbor area a nice kind of sky color. You know, this way you get away with a little bit more of the boredom of the gray age architectural, you know, concrete color and you add a bit more life to your habitat. Your animals wouldn't care about that anyways, but the color makes the whole thing pop a little bit more. It gives a bit more of a contrast uh, to the items and to the Arctic pieces in here, for example. So using colors is a great way of making your habitats a lot more um, intricate and a bit more uh, connected to the natural habitat of the animals that you have within that certain habitat. Another great example of that would be the um, the panda dome or the panda house that the lady designer did for our quality uh, zoo series because she actually used another nice trick I wanted to give away for you. She used different green tins that were getting lighter to the top of the habitat. So the trick about this is if you want to kind of um, uh, mimic the, the way how a forest works in the background, you start with a dark green to the bottom part and then you get brighter and brighter to the top. That way you kind of get the same vibe as if there is a forest in the background. It's a nice little trick to be used and just in general play around with colors in the background always helps to improve your habitats. Last but not least the potentially most obvious one, nature. Well I mean it's the one thing you would do anyways if you don't know how to make sure to block away certain things. You use, okay mate, are you so happy about this trick or what's going on here to the dude on the left hand side? He seems to be very happy about this obvious trick. Now, trees and bushes and foliage in general are a great way of hiding your habitats. And a good way about doing this is make sure to place them in a very clever way. If you layer certain things um, so that they overlap in in order to, you know, make sure that it looks very dense and very foresty without it actually being that way, you can achieve something like that, as you can see over here. It looks super dense. It's, it looks like as everything is surrounded by trees and stuff. So everything is just kind of filled in. But in reality, if we just go and have a little look, you can see I just layered them cleverly in here. So it's not really that dense anyways. I just put a lot of trees in so that from one side, they all kind of look like as if they were one, but in fact, they are not and then just put some bigger trees in here, made sure to have some smaller ones in front of it to cover up for some of the gaps. And that is about it. So it's not really that overgrown, but it really looks like. And this is also a cool way of making sure you, first of all, um, have a good way of the animals to be kept within the certain area, but also for the people to feel immersed and to just enjoy the area they are in. And um, yeah, so I think that's about it. About all the trips I wanted to uh, tips I wanted to give you for nice habitat backdrops. I really hope you guys found this interesting and inspiring. If you have other ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you have other things that you wanted to have um, as inspiration as well, please let me know in the comments as well. And if there's anything else you want to ask me or you want to add to this video, again, put it down in the comments. Help me make the algorithm notice this video. That is always the best way to help me out. Or actually, if you like the content and want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out the most, helps me reach the milestone. We are just a couple of hundreds away from 70K and that would be mega to reach this rather soon. So if you want to help me out and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. But other than that, uh, we are just going with the hype of that dude that just stood here and watched me giving you that tip. And I hope you guys have a good time. Stay safe, everyone. And until the next time, goodbye.